Nathana here from Make a Mess. Today we're gonna be painting this adorable turtle project. There's lots of circles happening. We're gonna use daughters and dabbers, and it's going to be a really fun project, and you're gonna learn lots of little techniques along the way. The most important part is to stay with me. When I do a step, you do a step, and then your project will turn out amazing. In your kit, there's all sorts of fun things. So you've got a bigger paintbrush and a detail brush. You're gonna need both of them. We've got a big dotter, and we've got some green paint, some blue paint, some turquoise paint, and a red, black, and yellow. But what we need to do is empty it all out because we're gonna need this thing first. Now this is a circular shaped container, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it for the turtle shell. So what I'd like you to do is use your muscles and gently bend it just a bit so that you're turning your circle into an oval. So an oval is just like a circle that has been squished a little bit to make like an egg shape. So that's gonna be our turtle shell. So we'll take that and we'll put it on our canvas kind of in the middle, making sure there's room at the top for his head and the bottom for his tail, and then we're gonna trace it out. Just remember, if at any time I'm going a little too quickly for you, feel free to pause the video and catch up to me. With your green paint and your bigger of the two paint brushes, we're going to trace out our oval shape that we just made out of our little Hot. So holding it in the middle of your canvas and dipping your brush into your green paint, we're just going to hold it carefully and go all the way around the tin pot. Or the, I guess it's a metal pot. There we go. Now you can use your thicker part of your brush because that can be the part of the turtle's shell around the outside of his shell that is a little bit wider. And we're actually gonna decorate that later with polka dots. So it's okay to have a nice wide paint stroke for this part. And it's okay if it gets on the brim of your, of your little pot too. Boop. And then when you've got it all the way around, you're gonna take it off. If you need to touch up parts, that's okay and you should have a nice oval shape like that. Next, we're going to take our paintbrush and we're gonna give him his little, his little legs. So his little legs are gonna be a U shape or like an N shape even. And you just go up and down and there's gonna be four of them. Now imagine an X, if it helps to paint an X, you can because we're gonna be filling this in anyway and then put one leg at each of the, of the spots of the X. So they're gonna be going through your circle diagonally. And with your big dabber, that's what we're gonna do the head of our turtle with. I'm sort of pouring my paint onto the dabber, but if you have a palette nearby, here, I'm gonna put it into my palette. It's much easier to dip it from a palette. I'm gonna put a little bit on my palette, or even if you have a paper plate, um, or even a little scrap piece of cardboard or paper, that's fine too. And make sure that the green's covering your whole sponge like this. And this is gonna be his head. So a little bit up from our oval, we're gonna push down his head, spin it in a circle, and then pull up. And then we've got his little head. And with our paintbrush, we will make his neck and we'll just pull in kind of a little bit of a V shape from his head. And I'm just gonna go over the circle part too. You don't have to, you can just leave it. It just changes the texture. And then fill in all your little legs the same way. I do long strokes because the painted turtles seem to have like little stripies on their legs. So I think if we do it in the same direction it gives it the turtle-y skin feel. Like, ah, I'm just spreading out my paint. Now to fill his big shell in, I just used 
my dabber and it'll go much faster than trying to fill it all in with our little honey paintbrush. And I'm just gonna be careful watching the edge of my dabber. I'm gonna be super duper careful not to go out of the line that I just made. It's just like coloring. You wanna stay inside your line and you wanna spread this paint kind of thin because we're gonna have to paint on top of it. We don't want any big clumps. So there is the base of our turtle. So let's go over all of our shapes. We traced our oval from our paint pot. Then we used our dabber to make a circle head and we pulled down two lines, a little bit in a V shape. So they kind of go in a bit for his neck and we filled it in. And for all the little feet, we just did either like an upside down U shape or like an, a small N shape. So it's just like a little loop. Now we're missing one more shape. We're gonna do his tail and his tail is going to be a triangle. So a triangle has three sides and three points. So I'm just gonna do three little points. One, two, three, and then we're just gonna connect them. So down into like a V shape, up, and then fill it in. There we go. So once you get to this stage, um, we're gonna let them dry for a little bit and wash your paintbrush and then we'll do our next step. Since we've already used our tin for what we needed it for, our little paint pot, you can now use it for water if you want. So I just put a little bit of water in there. I'm gonna use it to rinse my brush out. But a really important thing when you're washing your brushes is that you want them to be dry. So I'm rinsing it really well in the water, but then I'm using a paper towel to dry my brush. Um, and if it's easier just to go and wash it under the sink, that's fine too, whatever works for you. So I'm washing, I'm drying, and I'm making sure that all the paint is off of my brush before the next step. And then I'm just gonna place my water to the side because I'll use it again for another time. So let's look at this painting. What we're gonna do next while the, our turtle is drying is we're gonna do these cool water ripples all the way around our turtle. And to do it, we're gonna need two different colors. We're gonna need our light blue and then our turquoise aqua color. So go ahead and open both of those paints up. You'll be able to dip right from the containers for this one. You don't need to pour it in the palette. Move my palette out of the way here. And I'm opening my turquoise and my blue. And then what we're gonna do is carefully go around your turtle. I'm starting in my light blue and I dipped my paintbrush, but when I dip my paintbrush, can you see, I don't dip it all the way to the metal. You only wanna dip the bristles of the brush in, maybe about halfway down. You don't wanna stir the paint. You don't wanna scoop the paint. You just wanna dip the paintbrush, dip the tip, just enough. Because if you have too much paint, it's actually harder to control and it makes painting much more challenging. So what I'm gonna do, I'll bring this nice and close so you can see it. I'm gonna go all the way around my turtle and I'm not touching the green part. I'm leaving a little bit of a white space, that's okay. Because even if there's a bit of white space in our water, water has little white highlights and ripples in it too. So that's perfectly fine. And if you go too close to the green, the green might still be wet and it might kind of pull the green paint into your water too much. So it's easier to kind of be safe and just go as close as you can to it. And all I'm doing is making sort of a nice thick line, but I don't want any sharp edges. So here where the corners go like kind of sharp, see how they're sharp? I rounded them off with the blue. We'll just continue to do the light blue all the way around with rounding off your edges as you go. And this is gonna be our first sort of layer to this ripple so it's going to be like stripes some spots make it a little thicker like that and some can be a little thinner and that's okay it's okay for them not to be exactly the same all the way around remember it's water so it's going to be an organic sort of flowy line you just come as close as you can but don't have to touch the green 
all the way around. So we'll end up with something like this. It'll all be a little bit different, and that's what I love about art, is none of them are the same. So it'll look something like this, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the next stripe with the turquoise. And you don't have to wash your brush in between. You can dip, or you can um, dip right into the turquoise is fine, or if you wanna give it a little bit of a wipe off on a paper towel, that's fine too. But, but because both of those colors have a blue base, it's, uh, especially going from the lighter color to the darker color, it's not too big of a deal. When you go um, from the turquoise to the blue, we're gonna wipe our brush off a little bit just so that the blue can, uh, we can go from the dark to the light a little bit easier. Kind of get some of the extra turquoise off, but from for that time, it's not too hard. So now I'm just doing the same thing. I'm going around the next line with the turquoise, the same idea, but following the outside of the blue that I just did. And we'll do that all the way around. And you're just gonna continue this, doing a pattern. So it's gonna be blue, turquoise, blue, turquoise, all the way around the turtle until your whole background is full. like that all the way around and eventually if you get to the edge i think my next loop well this one got to the edge a little bit but my next turnaround will definitely get to the edge then you can wrap it all the way around the edge too so that's kind of fun so you can bring your water ripples right out to the outside oops a little too much paint to the outside of your canvas Here we go. And then we'll wash our brush. I'm gonna give it a little rinse in my water. And then I'm gonna dry it on the paper towel. Make sure it's really dry. And then I'm gonna dip back into my light blue and do it again. And it's okay if this light blue touches the turquoise because if they blend a little bit, that's fine. Water does that and it'll look nice. It's not a big deal. And I'm doing blue all the way around and kind of blending out my thicker spots. And here it touched the top. So see how my, oops, bring this a little closer, sorry. See how my blue hit the top of the canvas here? Then when I turn it like this, I'm just gonna bring that blue up and around on the top edge. And then I'll bring it back down here on the side. So once you hit an edge, just kind of follow it around the shape of the canvas and then keep going. And again, here on the side, it's doing it again. So I'm just gonna hit the edge, wrap it around, and then come back onto the front of the canvas and keep going around. And you'll continue to do these lovely swirly blue um, water ripples all the way around your turtle. And then just like we did before, when you meet up to your, to where you started with that round of blue, then you'll dip into your turquoise and you'll do it again. It doesn't really matter where you start. You might notice that sometimes I start at the tail, sometimes I start at the head. It doesn't really matter. No right or wrong. Oh, and I'm gonna go right around my edge again. And this part's almost all turquoise, so I might just fill this whole section in. And the idea is just to do this until your whole background is filled in. So you might end up with um, more blue around the edges, more turquoise around the edges. You might end up, like here, see in my corner, Bring this a little closer. In my corner, I've got some turquoise here, and I'll have turquoise here, but then my next part's gonna be probably just blue corners. 
There we go. And you're just gonna keep going until you're all the way full, like this guy. Okay, next up, we're gonna do the texture on the turtle's shell. So see how he's got these like dots all around that makes that turtley texture? We do that with our big dabber brush. So I gra grabbed some from my palette and I haven't washed this brush yet, so it's still um, still nice and saturated with the, with the green paint. And we're gonna do a dot right in the middle. We're gonna push down, spin and pull up. And then a dot on either side, push down, spin, pull up, push down, spin, pull up. And if they overlap a little bit, that's fine. I'm gonna do one below and above the center. So you kind of have a T shape and then there's gonna be one that fills in in between. And now those ones overlap a little bit, but it's fine. It's just to get that turtley texture. He's got that turtle shell feel, just like that. So I did one in the middle, one above, below, on either side, and then filling in the spaces in between. Now you can go ahead and wash these brushes. When you're washing the foam brushes, you really wanna squeeze out the extra water and paint, and then let them dry fully before using them again. If they're full of water and you go to use them again, it can really screw up your paintings. So make sure um, you run them under water. You don't wanna even use your, your water in your bucket for this one. You wanna wash them, squeeze them, dry them out. But we're not using that one again, so you can give it a wash and set it to the side. All right, our turtle project's coming along nicely. Next, we're going to need our little detail brush, the teenier one. And I'm just gonna put this down for a second and we're gonna need the black paint. So to open these little, um, these little guys, you kind of have to push one side up, one side down. So careful opening it. You might need to get help just so you don't spill it and open up your black and you can dip right from the black. Now, when you're dipping in your black, you don't wanna scoop your paint or stir your paint. Remember just to dip a little tiny bit in the paint like that. Okay, we don't want a lot of paint. You don't want it to touch the metal because we really need to be able to control it. And I'm even, I dipped that much, but look at, I'm even gonna take a little tiny bit of that paint off. Cause you don't want too much extra paint. That's where it makes it challenging to control. Just a little bit of paint is much easier to control. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start outlining around my turtle. So I'm gonna go on the outside of my turtle shell very carefully, dipping when I need to. And just go very, very, very slowly. This isn't a race. You wanna go all the way around your turtle shell very carefully around that oval shape. And I'm going right over top of, whoops, I dipped a little too much, so I'm just dabbing a bit off. I, I went right over top of my foot and over top of my tail. And I'm going all the way around the turtle shell. I can hear my dog in the background. He's trying to get in. <laughs> He wants to come and paint turtles with me. There we go, all the way around. Now with any detail brush, really, the harder you push, the thicker your line's gonna be. So the lighter you push, the thinner your line's gonna be. So if you want a thin line, don't push very hard. If you want it to be a bit thicker, you can push a little bit harder, but really just try and go as carefully and as gently as you possibly can. So once I have all the shell done, then I'm gonna go around my triangle tail and my U-shaped hands and feet. And the black outline really makes things pop. And it's very, um, very common in native art to have these strong black outlines. And this art piece is inspired by a native style of art. So that's why we've added these 
bold outlines, as well as the dot art that we're going to include. Oops, forgot to go over his head. There we go. And turtles are very, um, have a lot of meaning in the native world too. There's a whole story called Turtle Island. Might be something cool to look up. They have a lot of meaning as well. Going around his head. And I know this part's a little tricky because we really have to stay focused and do it as carefully and as delicately as we can. Teeny tiny brush doing teeny tiny details, but it really does make it worth it if you can be careful while doing it and do your best to stay really still and do the details carefully. It'll really make it turn out nice. There we go, I've got it all outlined. So with this same detail brush, if you dip the back end in, like the hard end, dip it in the black, you can give each foot three little toes at the end. And it's just little dots, so dot, dot, dot. Next foot, dot, dot, dot. Next foot, dot, dot, dot. Oops, that one I might need to do again. Oop, there we go. There, little toes. And for his eyes, I'm still just using the back of the brush. Um, I'm going to do kind of oval shapes. So I'm dabbing down, and then I'm just kind of going to pull my dab into an oval shape on each side. So I dot it down, and then I pulled it to make it into an oval. And there's two little ovaly eyes. He's coming together. And we're almost done. Um, so go ahead and wash this brush and we can wash that in our water bucket, which I have holding up my, paint, my, paint, my painting right now. So we can wash both ends. We can wash the bristle end and we make sure we dry it really well on our paper towel. And then we can even wash the back end and dry it really well. Give it a good cleaning. And then we're gonna get out our bigger brush again and we're gonna use the back side to do some patterns on our turtle shell. Let's look at the pattern that we have going on on the shell. So we have dot art. We've got dots that we've used the back part of our bigger brush. We've used that to make these dots and we've got a pattern that goes red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, all the way around. If you want to change your pattern, you can. It could be red, red, yellow, red, red, yellow, or it could be yellow, yellow, red, yellow, yellow, red, any pattern you want, but we're gonna go all the way around our turtle shell doing the pattern and using the back of our brush. So first we're gonna need our yellow and our red opened up and then we can do our dots with the back of our paintbrush for our turtle shell and our patterns. All right, so with the back of the brush, I'm gonna start in red and I'm gonna do dots. So I'm just gonna, I know I'm just gonna do the same pattern where I had red and then a yellow. So I'm gonna leave the space. So I'm gonna say red, leave a space for the yellow, red, leave a space, red. And I can do all my reds first because it just makes it easier that way. If your pattern's a little bit more complex and you would like to do it one color at a time, you're gonna have to wash your brush off or, or wipe it off between every color. So it might be easier just to try and leave the space for your pattern for your next color. 
and I'm just dipping and dabbing. So I dip and I dab and I dip and I dab and I try to leave my space all the way around my turtle shell. Something that I learned um, while doing native art is that anytime there's an animal, it's important to have red in your art piece because that represents its heart and life. So there's always, that's why you see a lot of red in native artwork. So we're making sure to include our red in our dot art for this piece. And this is your artwork. If you wanted to decorate his tail with some dots or anywhere else, and a shell or something that you think might look good to have a little bit of dots, you totally could. But for now, let's just start with the outside. So I've got all my red dots all the way around the outside. Then I'm just gonna give it a good wipe off on my paper towel. Um, you could rinse it in water, but I bet you can get all the paint off with just your, with just your paper towel. There we go. And then I'm gonna dip into the yellow and then fill in all the spots in between my pattern with the yellow. Kind of looks like beads too. I almost dipped in the red. Whoops, good thing I caught that. If that happens, you just gotta wipe it off and do it again. All the way around the circle. Boom. Um, while we have the yellow open, another little detail that is cute on the turtle, I'll just zoom in right here, is see the little lines on his neck? The little little yellow lines. I added those in just with the tip of my detail brush. Those are optional. If you don't want to put those in, you don't have to. If you like the look of those little lines, um, I think the painted turtles have that on their neck where they have the like, little yellow kind of stripes. So I just, using the edge of my brush really carefully, I'm just adding in a few little stripes. You could add them on the legs if you like the idea of that too, if you want. Just a few little ones on each leg like so and we're almost done our project there is one last little detail that is i find is an important one on any piece where you have eyes and this is the reflection of light so if we look at our original painting see how his eyes have this little tiny dot of this i use the light blue color you can use white you could even use yellow what you want is a bright color that will reflect the light in the turtle's eyes. So what we're gonna do is with the back of our detail brush, our smallish, brush, our smaller brush, we'll dip it in the light blue, and then, oops, I'm just gonna get nice and close, and ever so carefully, you're just gonna add a teeny dot around the same spot in both of the eyes. And that's the little highlight, and it really brings him to life. He looks so cute. And we're done. And just like that, our turtle project's complete. Look at how cute they look. I hope you had fun painting the turtle with me. And I bet you yours is amazing too. Make sure you name your turtle. Maybe he could be Tony the turtle <laughs> or Terry. Anything you want, you can name your turtle. Um, and make sure you sign your own name in the bottom corner of your painting. And when you sign, it should just be kind of small writing in the bottom corner. You don't want it to take over your whole painting, but if you can squeeze your name in the bottom corner, if you use like a Sharpie would be good or marker, um, and make sure that where you're signing is dry before you use the marker or else it will dry out your marker and your marker won't work anymore. So make sure the paint is dry and then just sign your name. You can even put the year next to your name and then you're all done. Make sure you leave it somewhere flat to dry and when, it's, when you're all done, you can hang it on your wall and enjoy it forever. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for painting with me. Bye.